These Final Words Chapter 1 Emergency Twilight Sparkle slowly turned the dial on her latest invention. She hadn't decided on what to call it yet, but the basic premise of it was a device that you used radio waves to map out the stars in the sky. In order to get it to work, she had to install a large antenna and dish on the roof of her castle in Ponyville. At first, it had been working well. Then one night, she had adjusted the dish. She ended up picking up something mixed in with the satellite. She had spent the next couple of days trying to clean up the signal to see what it was. But so far, she was having no luck. As she worked, she heard a knock on the castle's large doors, and she sighed. Spike was currently running errands in town, so that left her to go answer the door. Leaving the radio set, she made her way from the side room into the main room of the castle, past the large map in the center of the room, and towards the front door. When she got there, she opened it and saw Applejack standing outside. Hey, Applejack, she said, smiling to her friends. Hey, Sugar Cube, Applejack said, smiling. I was wondering if you were all right. No pun is seen ya for a few days. Twilight blinked at her. A few days? She fought about it before smiling sheepishly. <laughs> I just got wrapped up in a f something. I'm guessing... It has something to do with the big tower saying that you added to your castle. Applejack asked, looking up to the roof. And the large metal tower toppled over the large dish, pointing at the sky. Yes, it does. I noticed Rarity and Fluttershy making their way towards the castle door. Uh, Twilight, dear? It's so good to see you again. It's been so too long. Rarity said, and Fluttershy gave a small wave. Yeah, <laughs> as I was telling Applejack, I got wrapped in a project I was working on, she said, laughing nervously. Oh, what are you working on? Fluttershy asked, looking at her curiosity. Well, I've been using radio waves to view the stars, and I think I picked something up, but I can't make out what it is. For all the background noise. What, like aliens or something? Applejack asked, smiling at the sheer ridiculousness of the thought. Well, the dish is pointed to the sky, so possibly, Twilight said. She had actually been so focused on cleaning up the signal, she hadn't thought of what the signal could be. Her friends just stared at her for a little bit. That sounds like something that could be... An amazing discovery, if it is, Rarity said, as she fought. What sort of fashions aliens might have, though it was hard to imagine, as she had no idea what aliens would look like. Twilight nodded. Yeah, that is true, but just think of how much it would change our theories, view of the universe, to know there is other intelligent life out there, Twilight said, as she fought how making contact could advance Equestria scientific field by leaps and bounds. I'm sure you want to get back to your fancy radio, so I'll head back to the farm. I was just taking a small break to make sure you were okay, Twi. Rarity nodded. And Fluttershy and I are making our weekly date to the spa, so we will bid you farewell also, Twilight. Twilight nodded and bid her friends farewell. Before returning to the side room, she spent another hour doing everything she could think of to clean up the signal before she sighed in frustrations and let her head fall into the control panel. Her head hit the control panel harder than she thought it would, and she shot up and yelled, rubbing her forehead. A moment later, a slow tone came from the speaker of the radio. She blinked. As the slow tone continued for another minute, 
and then, in a motionless voice, began to speak. This is an emergency broadcast for the continental United States. The federal government has issued a state of emergency for the following states. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California. The emotionless voice continued to name off places Twilight had never heard of, all of them in alphabetical order. Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Twilight had been counting. The voice had listed 48 names total, and Twilight wondered what could have happened for so many places to, to be having an emergency. If you have access to a fallout shelter, it is recommended you enter it and wait further instructions. The National Guard has been deployed to provide aid, and martial law has been declared across the United States. Citizens are asked to remain calm and await further instructions. The slow tone started to play again, and after a minute of the message repeated, Twilight listened to it again in case it changed, but after the fourth time she realized it was some form of a recording. Her mind raced with thoughts on what could have happened. She didn't know what fallout was, but she knew it must have been bad if there was a shelter built just for it. What could have happened to every pony was being told to seek shelter on the ground. After listening to the radio for the tenth time, Twilight turned off the radio. It didn't give her any more information she could l use. She needed time to think about what the alien message had said, what it could mean. Chapter 2 Voice the night after Twilight had listened to the alien transmission, sleep had been difficult to catch. Her mind raced with thoughts on what the message could mean and what could have happened. She had realized the United States was a country and that the names, the messages, had been said either cities, sections of the country, but the thought of what could have caused an emergency in so many places where the alien government would tell its people to seek shelter, she couldn't come up with a solid theory that made sense to her. The only saying that she could think of was something like when Tirak was destroying Equestria, but the message had made no mention of something like that, and she thought they would have. When she did finally fall asleep, her dreams were filled of images of alien ponies huddled together in a cave, and other ground shelters as T-Rex rampaged through across Equestria after draining the land of its magic. The next morning, she had gone and fetched her friends so they could listen to the message and maybe help her come up with some theories on wh what could have happened. Pinkie Pie, of course, was had been the most enthusiastic about it, as she wa wanted to hear what aliens sounded like. Rainbow Dash had thought the idea of aliens would be awesome, while Rarity and Applejack were just curious. Fluttershy simply hoped the aliens were friendly. Twilight hadn't told any of them what the message had said. She didn't want to affect what they thought while listening. Once they had... They were settled. She started to adjust the dials again, looking for the signal. After a few minutes of only static, Rainbow Dash sighed. Come on, Twilight. I thought you said we were picking up a message from aliens. What's taking so long? She said, crossing her hooves over her chest as she hovered in the middle of the room, small room. Dallin. Twilight's probably f needing to find the message again, Rarity told the flying mare. Oh, she just dreamed about picking up aliens, Rainbow Dash said with a bored tone. Listen, Sugar Cube, if Twy said she heard an alien message, then I believe her, Applejack said. Twy knows 
the difference between a dream and real what's real. I wonder what sort of parties aliens like to have. Pinkie Pie mused as she bounced around the room. Maybe they stopped sending the message. No, I don't think they would have. Twilight said, turning a dial. The static changed slightly and she smiled. She could hear a voice behind the static and her. And she slowly adjusted another dial. And... I repeat, this is Captain Jared Graceland to command. Please respond, command. Twilight blinked. This was different. This was a different voice than yesterday. This seemed not to be a recording. Commander, please respond. We have 150 civilians in need of medical attention. We have evacuated to a safety zone 56 kilocks south of Seattle hot zone. I repeat, we have 150 civilians in need of medical attention. Commander, do you copy? Twilight blinked again and looked back at, at her friends who were staring at the radio wide eye. Even Rainbow Dash had landed. Um, Twilight? What is that? Um, Twilight? What is that? I... I don't know. This wasn't the message I heard yesterday. She looked at the radio as the captain continued to speak. Commander! Command, please! Someone respond! Where the hell is everyone? This is command... This is Captain Graceland to command. Respond! We are in need of medical supplies. We are injured. We need help here. Damn it! Someone fucking respond! Twilight flinched as the captain started to lose his temper, with the fact his command wasn't responding to him. Damn it! We have women and children here, command! In desperate need of medical assistance. Fucking respond! Twilight reached her hoof out out and turned off the radio. She had heard enough and wasn't sure she wanted to hear more about the captain's situation and the fact whoever he was seemed to be caught to talk to wasn't responding for no for some reason. She turned and looked at back at her friends and saw Fluttershy had retreated in to her mane, her bottom lip quivering while a rainbow dash and Applejack's eye uh, just stared wide eye. Rarity looked of both offended and concerned at the same time, and Pinky's mane had lost some of her poof as she stared sadly at the radio. I... I don't know what's going on. That wasn't what I heard yesterday. Yesterday message had some tones and a recorded message taking, talking about an emergency being declared and that ponies should seek shelter. Twilight said she was shaking slightly as she thought about what the captain had said. He was trying to get aid from whoever was in charge. Ponies who hadn't responded to him despite the dire situation he was clearly in. Do, do you think they are going to be okay? Twilight took, looked at her. I don't know. Twilight said she didn't know what a woman was, but she definitely knew what children were, and she could guess that the captain was a part of an alien military. Possibly the National Guard's yesterday's message had me mentioned. She couldn't help but imagine ponies covered in some ca kind of cave while hurt and surrounded by their military that is supposed to help them but is unable to do so because they are in the same situation as the rest of them. I... I think that's enough listening to the radio, alien radio signals. Twilight said. Her friends nodded, and without a word, the group slowly left the small room. Well, guys, this is Wolf Titan. Uh, I wanted to commend you guys for listening through this new short story. I know it's been a while since I brought in an MLP story, so I just wanted to say, hey, uh, I am planning on a 50 of subscriber special, so if any of you guys who aren't subscribed, maybe subscribe and you can see what's my next plan. But I am doing some plans, for example, uh, some of my older works. 
I'm going to do a remake of and bring them out here for you guys. Please tell me what you guys think. I really like hearing what you guys say, those who do. And maybe give me some criticism. Uh, I hope you guys have an excellent day and keep listening. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, Wolf Titan signing out.